Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we're going to show you how to install a spectrum receiver in your Baby Hawk, and without taking it apart, that's the key. Going to take, not take it apart, install a receiver in about five minutes or so, and this is actually a special receiver that we got here. This is not a Spectrum brand receiver. It is a DSMX receiver that operates in DSMX, but it actually works on five volts instead of 3.3, which is what Spectrum receivers run. Um, un unless you buy the $50 4649 right. receiver. We do have an option for FlySky as well. So now we have the ability to do Baby Hawk with the Tyrannus or FR Sky, for I uh, Free Sky, um, the QX7, stuff like that. We have the option on the FSI6, the older non touchscreen version, and Spectrum as well. So wow, too we many got, options. We got everything co covered for Also, some bonus footage. Will is going to show you how to bind it with this new receiver we have and some basic fundamentals of Betaflight. Quick and dirty, if you know how to use Betaflight, you should understand the video. All right, all right, so here it goes. All right, well, so before we get um, started, I've seen videos online, I think even Emacs has a um, video on their website that shows a video, but guys taking it apart, and I'm just, when I saw that, I was like, I don't want anything to do with this. Well, the thing so, is, the receivers that they use, Spectrum receivers, unfortunately, now we're getting to the point, Spectrum receivers are too big. Um, they're really hard to mount. The Spectrum uh, 4648 receiver with the case, if you decase it, yeah, you can get it in there. You have to deep pin it. It's, it ends up being a pain in the butt kind uh, of thing. Yeah. Um, also guys, these run at 3.3 volts, so you have to run that. There's a rear pad on the Baby Hawk. It's very small, it's very easy. Um, if you're not good with soldering, you could bridge something because it's also the boot pad. Um, or you can actually lift the solder pad. Guys are crashing and the soldering pad's coming uh, right wow. off. And okay. guess what? Then your flight controller's done, you can't right. do anything. Um, the other option is the uh, 4956 telemetry receiver from Spectrum. Um, it's a little bigger, you can mount it, it's five volt, but it's $50, that's half the price of the Baby Hawk. Right. So we're gonna take these options and just get them out of here. We're gonna show you this receiver here, and this actually runs at five volts. And I know um, everybody's going, well, how does it run at five volts? It actually has a regulator on the back of it to run five volts and step it down to 3.3 internally so you can you don't have to run like an inline adapter it already has that adapter already on the back of the board uh, i've put spectrum receivers in the baby hawks and it's very close the props are very close to hitting it if you if you crash and the flight controller is just double sight taped uh, if you hit hard enough the prop will start eating up antennas and stuff like that so yep this little receiver is is definitely the the magic receiver for the baby Hawk. all right so less than five minutes we're going to show you how to solder and here it is we have here we have a ground pin five volt pin and signal pin. And this is gonna be the UART port that we're gonna to have to solder up to, that the quad's actually pre-configured for. This, we're not using a standard servo pin, we're gonna to have to cut this and solder regardless. So what's that about? Uh... Uh, about an inch or so, a little over an inch. And normally I have a cutting pad for this, but for the video so you guys can see, I cut there. So I cut the wires there and then I'm gonna tin them. Is it for the video or is it because you're just lazy to get the mat? So we got three wires there. We're gonna go ahead and take the flux and tin the wires. Tinning is very important, by the way. So we're gonna get the solder, tin wire, tin wire, tin wire. Now this is not silicone wire, so you don't wanna hold heat to it too long. Otherwise it melts the jacket backwards and then you can't do anything. We'll flux again, and I'm gonna put it on the three solder pads, the three pins here, for and use them as solder pads. Get the props out of the way. Now you may wanna remove the props for this if you are not the best with the soldering iron or don't want to melt your props. Um, melted you get, props are always good sometimes. Melted props don't fly as well as normal props. But we're going to get this going here. So I'm going to tin it, tin it, and tin it. That was quick. Yeah. Doesn't take much. What, uh, what, before you, what, so, what watt soldering iron? This is just a 30 watt iron. Okay. So he's upside down, so yeah, it may this seem is, a little awkward for him. But Yeah, this is better. not how I normally solder here, guys. But for you guys, I'll do it. Aww. And then the middle one's red. Mm hmm. And then looking at the quad, the far left. Hold on, I'm trying to. OCD's kicking in here, sorry guys. Alright, and then basically I'm just gonna kind of bend these wires to the position I need so I can get in there. All 
All right, so we got three wires in there. Now I'm gonna actually tuck this to the back side around here. Now you're gonna to wanna to probably apply the shrink tube. Um, if you have a little blob of hot glue, you may wanna put a little blob of hot glue over the antenna just so you don't break it off down the road. But you will shrink the antenna and I'm gonna use a super fancy lighter for this because uh, I don't have my heat gun with me. All right, so we got the shrink tube put on real quick and simple. You can see it's actually, it's labeled DSMX, five volt and ground, yellow's DMS, DSMX or the signal. 5 volts of red and black is ground. Okay, cool. So we got that there. Shrinks um, on there. Now there's two ways to mount it here. I'm just going to double sided tape on the back of this. Yes, this is, I mean, you can mount it down in there. There's multiple ways to mount it. Um, but this is, if you want to run the wires long, you can mount it down in there if you want. Um, this is just a quick and easy way for you guys to get a spectrum satellite in less than five minutes. So we got double sided tape on it. All right, so now I just got to plug in the receiver. And this is where having tiny hands would be good but there and now we're going to turn it around and mount it no way that that's easy? it that was less than five minutes done granted depends on how quick you can solder and all that but now all you have to do is configure it bind it in spectrum uh, just like you would any other quad you can use some of the e machine manuals if you don't if you already have one or other stuff online. I guess we'll post the bind procedure on this probably too, but that's all you need to do. Um, gets the antenna there. Now, other ways you can mount it if you want to. Uh, let's just go ahead and pull this off and show you. I would probably actually, one of the ways I run it is taking the receiver and actually getting it down in there, which is a little, a little harder, but I run it down underneath. But you don't have to take it apart though. No. No, again, there's no taking apart on this. And then actually, I've actually found there's a little channel down here. Um, it's a little hard to get to, but running it down here keeps it nice and clean and out of the prop. So if you're not flying really far away, um, it gets it out of the way. Now, if you're going to do long distance, keep it up top. Um, but if you're not flying really far away or super long distance or anything like that, if you're just flying in the backyard, uh, the range is more than good enough. And you just kind of run the wires however you want there, but just make sure you tuck them in because you don't want them in the way of the propellers. Don't, don't use a knife to tuck the wires in. Yeah, no, this is a... I know, I'm just letting everybody else know. Now we got that mounted here. We got the wire run down this little channel here down the side. Let me see. Does it come out and hold this still? Oh, yeah, look at that. Pop yeah, right out so I just ran it down that groove down there, and you also want to make sure the flight controller doesn't shift because the Baby Hawks do have a tendency... That flight controller shipped it. Right, so bind, now we're going to bind the little baby hawk with that receiver. Yeah, now we got it set up. So now we're going to show you how to bind. You're going to have to configure a couple things and then bind. To go to, let's see, double check ports. You're going to have UART3, which is serial, which should be from the factory. It should be enabled. So you're going to check that. Then you're going to go to configuration. You're going to scroll down and see where it says S bus right here under receiver. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure, we'll make sure it's set to serial based receiver. Then we're going to just set it to Spectrum 2048, assuming we're running a DSMX radio. If you have DSM2, you'll have to do 1024. Um, then you're going to hit Save and Reboot. Now we got to go to CLI. And I'm going to type in the word Set, Space, B-I-N-D. You're going to go here, right. hit Enter. It's going to give you a couple options here. And then what I do is I just highlight this right here. And then I Control Copy, Control C, go back in here, type in, type in the word Set, and then Control V. Now it's gonna be, and this, you could type it out too, but I just, I'm lazy, so. Right, no. And then I delete zero, and I'm gonna change it to nine. Okay, so when I do that, now I gotta hit enter. Now I gotta type in, it confirms that it did it. Type in the word save, hit enter again. Saving. And it's gonna reboot. All right, so now what we gotta do is unplug the power, plug in the battery, and you'll see a fast flashing receiver in yep, there. That's the old spectrum. And like typical my radio, you may not have to do this, but we're gonna go into binding. And I'm gonna step a couple feet away because for some reason mine does not bind. No, it's three feet. Yeah. So let's watch this. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Bound. Now guys, Bound. I would probably turn the quad upside down so the gyros don't allow it to arm or anything like that if it's a default setting and you don't have your arm 180 uh, if you turn it upside down it won't arm take the props off or secure the quad in some way or shape or form again this is just for the tutorial um, but definitely 
keep it safe because you don't want to go in full throttle into your house and in a china cabinet or something like that you know? you're going to see all the movement here um now another thing you're gonna to have to do if you're running spectrum you'll see all the channels if i give it roll see it's giving the wrong channel so i have wrong to change direction it. oh no it's, it's physically the wrong channel oh, hold, on, hold on go back i didn't see that so see pitch is moving on roll that's not right okay. so we need to change it to jr and then hit save what other options were there i thought it said spectrum there's default oh, top tech. Of jr okay. yeah so we so want jr spectrum. change it to jr hit save now you got right left down up right left and then throttle get rid of that beeping i like the beep get rid of it i like the beep now you will have to set your sub trims this one's already another model i already had that was a quad i just literally copied another model i had with another spectrum receiver happens to line up almost perfectly but if you're starting from scratch you would need to set your sub trims in your radio so you have to make sure you got with all the sticks neutral you want to make sure you got 1500 all the way across which I'm trying to move my stick a little bit here but you want 1500 here and then between 1000 and 2000 there but neutral and then when you give all the sticks to the bottom left corner um, you want them all seeing a thousand. You will, if this is a real spectrum radio, not like a Tyrannus with a module or anything like that, you will have to reverse channel two and channel four, which is your roll and your yaw channels. Otherwise, they'll be backwards, um, but, and you'll see it on the tab. So again, just the easy way to do it. Bottom left corners, you'll see all low. Top right corners should all be high. And you want it 2,000 for top and 1,000 for low. That's the easy way to do this. It's quick and dirty, makes it work. Um, and then you have your flight mode switch is whatever you set them to. Uh, I don't think the Baby Hawk has anything configured. It just has an angle. Um, angle and acro out of the box, you can set those as well. But let's just show you for example here. Um, I'm gonna unplug the battery now. And I'm gonna arm with stick command, which is what Rick says to do. Let's see, oh, is it level? It's not level. Looks level to me. It doesn't, think, the gyro didn't think it was level. Maybe because you had it upside down earlier? All right, so. Battery died in the middle of that, sorry. Uh, I had to grab another battery, but <laughs> now it's bound. All right, so anyway, so where were we? You gotta make sure your throttle is under 1100 default. Um, you want it as close to 1000 as possible, otherwise your motors will not arm. I'm gonna put a switch for the arming, so I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. Um, arm, and I'm gonna use my gear channel, which is aux one, and I'm gonna set this to aux two, which is the second channel. You'll see that moving. Yeah, so basically the gear switch is gonna be arm, yeah. So it has to be away from you to fly? It Wherever you set right. it. Right, that's the way I like it. It's personal preference. But if you look here, aux one, I just changed that to aux two, but arm, you'll see when I move my switch, I'm flipping the switch right now. This is actually the physical switch. Yeah, I'm gonna move the whole slider. That way it's armed, that's disarmed. Um, I'm gonna set that to aux two, and that's gonna be when I move the switch. So again, this is just something really easy here. So now I saved it, and when I hit the arm switch, the motor's gonna spin. Now I gotta be careful here because the USB port on this is in the way of the props. So to check this, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it and unarm this arm. That spins so much better than mine. Well, that's what happens when they're clean. Yours is covered. Hold on, hold on. That's just because I use mine. This is what happens when we product <laughs> test. Um, Basil's having a little too much fun with his. It needs to be clean, so please don't oh, let your don't don't abuse your baby hawks. There's no you can't even hardly tell which one's been used. You can't honestly. I, I think I, I think I, this I, is the new one. If you know how to solder, you can do this in literally five minutes on the hardware part, five minutes on the software if you know what you're doing, and you got a spectrum compatible baby hawk. So there you have it. We showed you how to install and solder your receiver without taking it apart, which I didn't believe it because I've seen tons of videos where the guys took it apart and I just said I want nothing to do with this. So. Now guys, I do recommend, again, taking the props off if you're gonna solder in there. Taking the you props just gotta off. take the front yeah. too, and when you take them off, just make sure you don't cross yeah, them, because then it'll just flip right over. The basic soldering iron, um, flux, you'll need flux, and 60-40 uh, solder, um, and the shrink tube actually comes with it, so I didn't use any additional shrink tube or anything like that. As long as you put the shrink tube on the receiver, you don't have to worry about shorting out on the pins. All right. So, the link is below the Baby Hawk with the receivers, uh, all three different kinds, Fly Sky, Free Sky, and DSM2. The batteries, the shrink, everything is in the link below. Uh, like, subscribe, and let us know what you think about this video and any more videos you want with the Baby Hawk. Yes. <laughs>